my project Felt Basin Water Quality Survey. Now this project, I was encouraged to cut it in half, so please feel free to ask questions at the end. <laughs> so, so one important tool for marine science education is having live specimens to help prove points and sometimes demonstrate the importance of animals. And one common method that is used to make sure that these animals are always on hand is by keeping them in aquariums for either short or long-term purposes. However, some species are sometimes too delicate to survive transport or to survive an aquarium that often ends in death. <laughs> However, it was suggested that sometimes these animals can survive in the more natural planktonic waters of the ocean. And it was suggested by my mentor that perhaps one site that could, animals could be placed in some sort of animal box is the NASA boat basin, which is an area where the MSC keeps some of their research boats. So that leads to my project, uh, which is uh, considering variable weather conditions, was the water quality at this boat basin stable enough to keep animals in there for either short or long period of time? And my hypothesis was that the water quality would be stale enough during at least the summer months because that's when I conducted my experiment, so I, we have no idea what the water quality would be during so the first condition I had to check, which was pH, which refers to acidity. And the ideal pH for most marine organisms lies between about 8 and 8.3. And this condition is one that must be very near constant and close to the ideal, otherwise animals would not be able to survive. The second condition I had to look at which was temperature, which was in some animals are more sensitive, where some can live in a wide range. And the ideal for most saltwater creatures lies between about 20 to 25 to 30 degrees Celsius. However, this is not very strict for their both cold and tropical organisms. So the temperature is not quite as specific as the pH for it would not necessarily define can organisms survive at the basin, but more what animals would be placed there. Next, I have nitrites and nitrates, which are two chemicals that are produced by both fish and invertebrates through a variety of biological processes. And in high levels, these chemicals can be very toxic, so the ideal for this would be as close to zero as possible. And the challenge is that if too many animals are placed in the boat basin, if the animal box was created, it could result in high levels of these chemicals. The next condition I had to look at was salinity, which is the ratio of salt to water, and sometimes it's measured in parts per thousand or parts per million. And different animals will have different tolerances to salt, so similar to temperature, this would define what sort of animals would eventually be placed in the boat basin. Lastly, I had dissolved oxygen, which in my opinion is possibly one of the most important. If there's not enough oxygen, the animals could not survive, and some animals require different amounts, and the challenge is again, if too many animals are placed, they could run out of oxygen. So first, I had to test the weather conditions, so not only would I have my chemical data, I would also be able to compare how the weather would affect the water quality. So first, I simply looked up at the sky and sort of saw what the weather was like. And then for more specific data, I used the Kestrel weather device over here. And that I, with that, I could get humidity, air temperature, wind speed, and then also the direction for reference. So then for my water quality, I had to use a lot of different methods. For instance, I used the chemical Cresol Red, which tests acidity for the pH. I used a refractometer for salinity. I used special test strips to gather nitrites and nitrates. I had a thermometer for the temperature, a dissolved oxygen meter for dissolved oxygen, and then I had a measuring stick to gather depth of the water. And then I also had additional less accurate observation methods, such as the naked eye, dip nets, and also animal identification guides to see what other animals lived in the area as a less exact method to see what other animals lived there so that I could provide a general idea of what other animals could possibly survive there. So first up, I have depth, and so this provides a general idea. As you can see, I have, t I have sites A and B. That is because I decided to test two areas. Perhaps one would have slightly better water quality than the other, even than the other, even though they are in a general proximity. So site A was a shallower area, which had slightly less boat traffic, where site B was an area that was a little bit deeper, but it was an area of high boat traffic. Next, here's the data for pH. The purple and green lines sort of outline that ideal I mentioned earlier. And as you can see, both sites A and B pretty much lies about within this ideal with minimal deviation. However, as you can see, site A had slightly better pH where it had fewer deviations from this ideal. Next up, we have temperature. The graph is somewhat deceiving. There was actually not 
quite as much variation as it appears. There's no more than about two degrees variation from the average of about 28 and a half, which is very good. So somewhat temperate watered organisms, which makes sense for our geographical location. Next up, the nitrites and nitrates, again, all zero. So that was very good. And next up is salinity. Again, there's actually not quite as much variation here. And as you can see at data point number six, there's actually this sort of dip in salinity. That was because day number six was post rainstorm. So low salinity was somewhat expected for that day. Lastly, we have dissolved oxygen. This green is sort of a minimum, I thought would be maybe a goal. It's not necessarily, necessarily an official number as far as it wasn't found in any books. However, I thought that perhaps this would be a good goal to shoot for. And as you can see, it is well above this line for most days. So, quick recap. The pH was good, the temperature was good, the nitrates and nitrates were both pretty much perfect, the salinity was very stable, the dissolved oxygen was good. So, in conclusion, so the final ruling is that the bulk basin can support life. However, there were a few sources of error for this experiment. For instance, there was a limited period for data collection between 10 and 4 because this boat basin is on the NASA property so I could only go there during public viewing hours. And again, this was only conducted during the summer so if the animal boxes are eventually built they could only be there for the summer months currently. And I only tested the water at the surface but if you can remember from the data for depth, the water is no more than about 2 meters at the deepest point where I tested so I doubt the water quality is that different between that two meters that it would be unlivable a little bit farther down. However, this current set of data has many possibilities for future work, such as the eventual construction of the animal box. Maybe that's a project other interns could take on. Then possibly other locations for this boat basin is surrounded by a tidal creek, so animals that would be placed in there would likely have be from this environment. So if the MSC wanted to have animals from perhaps a different environment, another location would have to be tested, and then perhaps data could be gathered during other seasons if the MSC desired to have a year-round animal in container. So here is a species I think would be a good candidate for an animal box if one were constructed, which is the squid. There are a few reasons why I think this species is a good candidate. First of all is that it lives in the general area for during Many of the programs during the intergenerational trips on the boat, during their trawls, many of them had caught squids, so we know they survive in the Tidal Creek area that surrounds the boat basin. However, also when they caught these, they were tended to be too sensitive for transport and did not survive at the MSC, so again, it fulfills that requirement as one that would not survive. And they also have a diet of both fish and small crustaceans such as shrimp, which tended to be in abundance at the at, at the boat basin. So not only would they, they could become a somewhat self-sustaining system, they could get some of their own food, although it would likely have to be supplemented by hand feed. So I decided to look into some possible models for what the animal box could look like, and I found two pretty good examples. The first one, this is a commonly used commercial model, which is called the aquapod. It's essentially a giant mesh sphere that floats in the middle of the ocean. However, it has to be hand fed, all the animals have to be fed. Whereas this other model over here is the Heia fish pond. It's a ancient fish pond in Hawaii. And it's essentially a giant stone circle and it's completely self-sufficient. All the fish come from the ocean. So perhaps some sort of mix of the two would be possible for, yes. So in conclusion, animals can be kept at the boat basin. And I would quickly like to acknowledge my mentor, Ms. Allie Redmond, back there for helping me throughout this project, <laughs> as well as my beautiful lab assistants, Paige and Blair, for <laughs> helping with transport and data collection, and my parents for their support. Uh -huh.